afternoon. Um, I am not in a cinema car park. I am actually on my own drive. Um, we just got back from the cinema, me and the children, and we went to see Home Alone. And I wasn't going to review it because it's 31 years old, terrifyingly. Um, but I wanted to talk about it anyway, and also just about cinema generally, because that's why this channel exists. And it's what I love and what I'm passionate about. So, first of all, Home Alone. As I just said, it's 31 years old. And I just said that to my kids and they were like, what? I was nine, just turned nine when Home Alone came out. And that's how old my son is now. So looking at him, looking like Macaulay Culkin at that age, um, it's just mad to think that that's, that's what age I was when this film first came out. And I think it's uh, a urged. It's aged really well. I think it absolutely deserves to be referred to as a classic um and there's so many reasons why i love it i think home alone and it's a wonderful life are my two favorite christmas films of all time and obviously they're very different from each other but there's so many reasons why i love home alone um it's really well written it's well directed it's got a brilliant score by john williams and i don't think when we're talking about john williams scores and we talk about indiana jones and star wars and superman and harry potter would the home alone score tends not to get mentioned and i think it should be because it's perfect and it's really iconic as well um the cast are absolutely superb so if i start with the adults um you've got Catherine o'hara and john hurd as peter and kate McAllister as the parents and it's funny watching it now because i realize that they're probably both only in their very early 30s and particularly the, the one who plays the aunt who's married to Uncle Frank looks so old because of the style and because of the early 90s, but actually wouldn't have been that old. And it's really weird watching it thinking like Catherine O'Hara and John Hurd are younger there than I am now. But yeah, so they're brilliant. And then you've got Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern as the Wet Bandits, as Marvin Harry. And they, they, you know, they were both celebrated actors. Um, I feel like Daniel Stern's done a lot of stage work, but I could be wrong about that. The only other thing I know him from, really, apart from being the voiceover of the Wonder Years with uh, Fred Savage back in the day, is um, City Slickers, which I also absolutely love, but haven't seen for years, which is around the same time as this. But Joe Pesci, obviously, is like, he's Joe Pesci. He's Joe Pesci from Goodfellas, and he's, you know, he's that guy, and he's just... They're both so good in this. Um, the physical comedy from those two is absolutely off the scale. Um, and the film wouldn't work as well if it wasn't for that physical comedy. Um, obviously, when all hell breaks loose in the house and they're falling off things and over things and through things. And it's just wonderful. And then you've got, obviously, the, the wonderful, late, great uh, John Candy as Gus, the uh, polka player who gives um, Kate a lift home in the budget van. Um, he's only in a couple of scenes, but he's absolutely wonderful in all of them. Watching it this morning, the scene where him and Kate are talking about like being bad parents and he tells the story about leaving his kid at the funeral parlour for a whole day and how it was fine because, you know, he started to come around six to seven weeks later, he started to talk again, just really makes me laugh because it's such a dark story. And I think, like, this is why I think it's held up as long as it has, because it's still funny. And it really was aimed at the whole family. So children enjoy watching a child as the lead. And then the adults enjoy the interplay between the adults. And oh, it's, it's just, it's such a good film. And I need to talk about Macaulay Culkin because obviously, like, he's he's a year older than me. So he's now 41. He was 41 in August. Because um, weirdly, yes, I do know when his birthday is. I'm so weird. Like, I must have read that in a magazine once when I was a kid and it's just wedged itself in my brain. And obviously he was in this and then he was in Home Alone 2 and he was in My Girl and he was in The Good Son with Elijah Wood, which got banned because he is a small murderer, which actually I have seen and is pretty good. Or I certainly remember it being quite good. And then he went off the rails a bit. And he's he's such an icon 
of the 90s obviously friends with michael jackson which attracted a lot of controversy but i think putting all that aside the, obviously the, there's a lot said about his relationship with his dad and that him and his brother um kieran who's obviously now in succession and um very highly regarded as an actor but there's talk that they were exploited by their parents pushy hollywood parents and um i don't think either of them have anything to do with their parents anymore could be wrong but if you put all that crap aside what you've got in this film is a performance from a he's supposed to be eight so i guess he would have been about nine when it was filmed but you've got a performance from a nine-year-old kid that isn't a good kid performance it's not a good child actor performance it's just a good performance and it's still a good performance now and we've all seen films where there's a kid actor in it and they're okay there's films where they're just a bit reactionary and a bit rubbish there's you know freaks like what's her face in um is it mara wilson who's in matilda and miracle on 34th street that like weird small adult thing same sort of vibe from um hayley joel osmond as well but macaulay culkin just brings so much wit and humour and confidence and I don't want to say sass but like he's just superb the kid's in almost every scene of the film he absolutely holds his own going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of um Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern and I think like you have to give props it's such a good performance and if it wasn't like he holds the whole film up if it, if the central performance wasn't as good as it is the film wouldn't work as well and it wouldn't have lasted as long because you do root for him and you like him because he's genuinely funny. The other thing I wanted to talk about is just, obviously, I'm very passionate about cinema. Um, as I came out, I was talking to a guy who works at the Audion who I know a little bit. And he was like, oh, have you seen Spider-Man? And I went, twice. He said, oh, I only got around to seeing it last night. I went, all right. I mean, it's only been out a week, but still, I was like, yeah, I've already seen it twice. And he was like, all right, okay. He said, have you seen the new Matrix? And I went, yeah, I saw it last night. And he was like, and I said about doing my top 10 of the year. And he was like, oh, I, I don't even know how. I've seen 10 films this year. And I thought, you work in a cinema. Have a word with yourself. And I know you don't have a family. So why aren't you just there all the time? Because I would be if I didn't have commitments. And obviously, I went to see a film this morning that I've seen hundreds of times that is over 30 years old. So why? Why pay the money to go and watch a film that we could sit at home and watch on Disney Plus? And my argument is this. When you go and see a film in the cinema, it has your whole attention. Because now, at home, you're distracted. You know, you might be on your phone a little bit. Or, you know, if it's me trying to watch something, the kids might interrupt me. And you get up for a wee. And even if you pause it. Whereas when you're in the cinema, you're in it. That's all that's happening is you and that film. And there's been numerous occasions where I've gone to the cinema to see a film that I know really well. But I've, I'm seeing it on the big screen for the first time. So it happened in 1998 when I saw Grease on the big screen. Um, it happened when I saw Stand By Me in a cinema for the first time. Also, I'm trying to think what else. There are a few more examples of, of going to see a film I know inside out and backwards and then seeing it on a cinema screen. And it happened with Home Alone today. I genuinely don't think I saw it at the cinema when it was first out. I know I saw the second one, but I don't think I saw this one. But I know this film really well. And Eva was watching it like a few days ago, a part of it on Disney+. Plus. But I noticed things that I've never noticed before. And I laughed harder at jokes, even though I knew they were coming. Because there's just something about seeing a film the way it was intended to be seen, which is on a cinema screen. You know, sharing it with my children. And there, was, there wasn't many people in there. There was two boys I had to tell off for talking. Um, there was a little girl with her granddad and then over to one side there was I think a woman with two quite young kids maybe sort of four and six like quite little and they were no bother when it got to the end like the whole house bit with all the violence um, I've got lipstick on my teeth ideal um, these kids were absolutely cracking up and the more violent it was the harder they laughed and I just thought like when you watch these films as an adult you're like good god like these things are horrible Eye into the face, blow torch to the head, burns his hand, falls over repeatedly, stands on Christmas ornaments with bare feet. And I'm like, properly like going, oh, whereas this kid or these two little girls were like just proper wetting themselves because it is really funny. Like I say, it's such brilliant slap slapstick. 
beautifully portrayed by two great actors who are obviously not only great actors but superb at physical comedy but yeah watching a film in the cinema just is a completely different experience and i know through the lockdowns in the last couple of years and loads of people are like oh cinema won't survive because you know something like eternals was out what last month and then it's on disney plus in the next few days shang chi is already on disney plus black widow i think was a simultaneous release to cinemas and then to the premier version of um disney plus jungle cruises on there now and people are like oh well why would you bother just wait for it to come to disney plus and i love sitting at home and watching a film i really do but sitting in a cinema is just different and it's special and i love it and i'll always choose that you know my ex dobbing him in here don't think anybody's going to arrest him but he'll download stuff just fine you know we used to download stuff and watch it tv shows that we couldn't get over here and occasionally you know a film because we had young children and we couldn't get to the cinema but i'll always choose the cinema every single time because it just makes you appreciate it and it makes you notice things that you've even like i say even if it's film you know really well whether it is die hard or the goonies or star wars or home alone if you get the chance to go and watch it on a big screen do it because it's just so much more immersive and special and magical and i just encourage everybody to do it last year we went to see elf on the big screen uh, me and the kids and they didn't they'd probably seen it once but they didn't know it really well and i've seen it a couple of times i'm not like a huge fan but i do like it and again it was just fun to watch it in a cinema screen um so yeah that's my little homage to the wonder that is home alone a stone cold christmas classic and just a little um misty eyed meandering about the joy of cinema um this will probably be my last review of the year because there's nothing else oh, i said about boxing day yes there might be some more before the end of the year i've probably just told you a lie but um i should go really i've left my children in the house i've left them home alone so i best go and find out what they're doing but uh thank you for listening uh yeah katie out <laughs>